Okay, hey everyone, thanks for uh, coming tonight to Aaron Schur's pastel painting demonstration. My name is Rich Breimer, and we've got Mike here with House of Eight Media for bringing the audio visual portion of the evening together. So, Aaron and I spent the last couple of days together. Well, he spent most of the time out painting, so he's got some paintings that he's been already working on in the area, and his workshop tomorrow starts, and we're really looking forward to that. Most everybody in the workshop is here, plus a, a good crowd of extras um, who are here to see you. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. It's, uh, it's awesome to be back here. Um, so, move into the, li into the lights. Okay, there we go. Um, so, uh, I thought I would show you just a couple things I did. Um, I, I arrived yesterday and just been running around trying to get some painting done. I figure I'll show you something just in case I bomb on the demo. That way, you know, I can <laughs> do something. So, um, this was uh, last night. Um, and uh, it probably needs a little bit of touch up work because it was getting dark by the time I finished. And then, um, yeah, nice little simple scene. Um, and then this was um, today, just before I came here. Um, and the birds were great. They landed right there for me. Yeah. And they stayed. Stay right all that st stayed on the beach uh, all afternoon. Um, but I'll be working in pastel. Um, and yeah, while I'm doing this, if any of you have questions, um, feel free to fire away with questions. Um, I mean, mostly what I'm looking for in in a subject to, to paint is um, it's really about the abstract shapes. You know, the idea of subject and drama and all that stuff comes second. Um, what I'm looking for, you know, to me it's something that, I call it the initial sensation. So something in the landscape that catches my eye. You know, you're walking at Garapata State Park and you're walking along and all of a sudden you just stop and there's that instinct to grab your camera or grab a friend and say, you know, look at that. So. You know, someone asked me, you know, about about the artistic mind versus just someone who's out hiking. And the real difference is that uh, I just stop and say, why do I? Why is that? Um, why did that catch my eye? And is it compelling enough um, to stop and set up an easel? And so for me, the idea is that you know, I see something that's interesting, and then I have to ask myself, is there a like you know, that be your lead actor, and then you've got a supporting cast. Do you have a supporting cast that? that um, is compelling enough that will support that, that idea. Um, and a lot of times it, you know, it, it might mean that the, the thing that I saw initially, um, I might need to move closer, I might need to move 20 feet to the left, 100 feet to the left, and so there's a process of walking back and forth until I feel like the foreground, middle ground, background clicks into place, and, um, and then there's something there. Um, if I'm really good, which I wasn't the last two days, um, then I get out the sketchbook and I do thumbnail sketches um, and really further work out the idea. Because really the process of painting is, is a, it's a process of abstraction. Um, I don't care how detailed, um, refined a painter you are, it's abstract. We're taking um, real light and real form and we're abstracting it to two-dimensional planes and it's light bouncing off of um, pigment rather than shining through things or onto things. Um, so it's, you know, so it's, um, so it's entirely abstract, even if it's got a subject that's recognizable. So, um, and then I, you know, then I start looking for things like, um, towards later in the afternoon, the wave started hitting a little bit bigger. And, um, and I played around initially with the wave here, but that brought too much attention to this bottom corner. So I knocked it back down. And then the wave hit here, and I went, oh, that's, that's what I want. And so I love painting waves. It's the most confounding thing. I mean, this isn't really a wave painting. This is more about the cliffs. But um, just in general, wave painting, is, it's the most confounding thing I could ever paint on location. Um, I wish it would slow down. <laughs> and it took me a while, like the, you know, when I started painting the ocean, to realize that you only get like every maybe seventh or eighth wave <laughs> hits the same way and so it hits you know say if it's hitting that rock then the, I look at the light the first time okay it's, a, it's really memory work and then next time I might look at the shadow next time I look at the cast shadow I look at the the reflected light you know each time it comes through 
look at a different aspect of what the water's doing. Um, another little trick that actually was Jesse Powell, who's got his place right next door when I met him at Carmel a few years ago. Um, he said, take slow motion video. And so um, I did that today um, just to check, you know, how the, where, you know, when this wave hits, where it is in reference to the wave action hitting this rock. Because um, I'm not smart enough to know, I mean, I'm sure someone who really knows wave action would know, okay, if it's hitting this rock here, it'll hit that one at this angle. And it's hard to bounce your eye back and forth. So sometimes if you're really confused, you can check that slow motion video and find, okay, when it hits here, it's doing this over here, whatever. So anyway, so I should get going on, um, on the good stuff. So I'm going to sneak these back here. And uh, and we'll get going. So what I think what I'm, um, I should probably, I'm going to turn this off. Is it this one? There we go. Because it's going to all cast that shadow. We're still OK with the? OK, so um, I'm looking at um, actually a picture from uh, a day when I was here a few years ago with my son, when the sun actually shone, because it hasn't, it's been all foggy. Um, and I wanted to just try a, a, a nice panorama idea, just get that breadth of the, of the ocean. Um, and I'll try to stand to the side as much as I can here, um, but I will tend to drift. So if you need to move, um, Feel free, and or if you need to yell at me to scoot over every once in a while, if, you, if you're just seeing my back, just let me know. So I'm going to start off. I, I block in with um, just Conte. Just have a little piece of Conte because it's a little harder. Um, I used to block in with uh, vine charcoal, but then it it's a little clunkier and it kind of gets into the pastel a little bit. Um, the the drawback to to working with vine charcoal, I mean with uh, Conte, is that um, you know it's harder to erase um, if, if I muck it up. Um, and I had a, I had a nice um, study in a different format that I was going to use to help myself on this. Um, and it's in a dry box with some other um, nice paintings that I was going to bring to show you guys. And it's sitting in my studio in Montana. So, um, so hopefully that memory of painting that will will carry me through. So when I'm starting, I'm just looking at, you know, I'm just trying to look at the big, the big picture, the big forms, and then break those down. So um, it's easy to get too complicated too early. But what I want to really look at, a good painting is just the relationship of, of, of um, someone said, this isn't me, but a good painting is a relationship of three to five forms. That's all it is. Um, so. And if you jump into detail too quickly, um, it's hard to see those basic abstract shapes. So um, and then some things that I want to make sure is I don't want this. This is going to be my main form here. That's what's really interesting to me. I don't want that dead center. Um, you know, I want to make sure it's a little above or a little below the center mark. <coughs> Move these out a little bit more. The other thing is, is that um, you know nothing is ever set in stone. So you know, get that that idea in there, and then move it if you need to. Now, things I will change in a painting, like um, if you can see, so this hill, the way I have it cropped here, which I can't seem to fix now, 
Um, I don't know if you can see that. There's this really dramatic upsweep on the hill. So I don't want to have a really steep line like that um, right at the top because that's not where I want the eye to go. So I'm either going to soften that or just change some angles there. So that's what I look at when I'm going to, if I'm going to change things, is just um, if something is calling too much attention to itself, you know, it's like that idea of you've, you've got your, your lead actor and your supporting cast and you, if someone's trying to <coughs> take attention away, you've got to do something about that. So. Other things I might do is, you know, I might change the, um, like I, might, I might change the proportions here, make this a little bit bigger as though I'm a little bit closer. Um, again, just to make it, give it a little bit more interest. Another thing to think about if you're, if you're working from f photographs, um, can, uh, I'll, I'll show you a little later. Um, I'll take different um, exposures uh, because typically the, the, like in a photo, the blues are bluer than they really are and the shadows are um, a little more, a little darker. You know, if you're just taking an automatic setting, the shadows often are just really, really black. So you want to be careful with that. Okay, so that's, that's my rough idea. So now, um, i got to start with something here. Um, start with shadows. And I apologize with pastel. The difference between pastel and oil is pa oil, I'm going to be mixing, 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 and painting. Pastel, I sit there and I stare, <laughs> and I wait for the color to jump out at me, and then it doesn't. And so I'll do a lot of um, grabbing, looking, checking, grabbing again um, until I find the right combination. It's, it's almost as about finding the, just the right relationship of colors. Um, so what I'm looking for at first in, in pastel is just, I'm just looking for an average, trying to get an average of the whole form. This will probably get a little bluer in the shadow. Um, and, uh, but the shadow is a little bit warm. Um, it's interesting painting here on a sunny day versus a... Um, Overcast day, because this is a good shadow color. What I'm using here is a, a really good shadow color on an overcast day, because it's a little bit warmer. There's a little bit more red in it, uh, in this gray. But on a sunny day, it's, uh, you're going to have cooler shadows. So there's going to be a little bit more blue. It's going to be reflecting a lot of the, both the sea and the sky. Um, so, But this will, I'll, I'll layer over. So I have a little bit of slightly warmer shadow coming through. The other thing I think about with, with painting more and more these days is that um, it, an idea is never done. Um, I think this will be the third, let's see, I think the fourth, fourth time I've painted this from this reference. I did a, a plein air painting on the spot. And then I did a large studio painting a couple of years ago, but it was a very different format. And then now I'm going to do, you know, much more panoramic format, because each time you can say something different, bring out something different. Um, so I like returning to a subject now and again. It's also just interesting to see, you know, how I've changed. Um, up here. So what I'm starting with is I just want to get basic light and basic um, shadow. That's a little cool too. Trying to get 
get something down. This is the part in the process where I'm like, oh goodness, people are watching me. <laughs> oh no. So just trying to figure out. So this will be messy. I'm just going to throw up a lot of color here so I don't, I can see the colors a little better on the easel. Watching me. <laughs> oh no. So just trying to figure out. So this will be messy. I'm just going to throw up a lot of color here so I don't, I can see the colors a little better on the easel. So, um, you know, I know I'm going to go a little darker with the darkest dark. And, um, you know, so those will be the dark accents. So there's a difference between general darks and then there's dark accents. So dark accents are, you know, like that line at the underside of a rock. So I'm just grabbing some color here. Um, you know, so like in here, I'll just show you, you know, it's going to be something like that where it's that at the base, that's too dark. But um, so I'm just going for averages. Um, and also just to get something down so I can start reacting to what I have down. And with pastel, I'm, I'm always saying, OK, like this is a little too blue, that's a little too warm, that's a little. And so then the, 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 the game of it is trying to figure out, OK, how do I layer it or put color next to it to make it feel like the right color? Um, and, and I shouldn't say the, the right color, because um, I think it was Robert Moore that said this, that if you have one color, it's a note. If you have two colors, it's a chord. A chord is music. So um, getting those color relationships um, in an interesting way. So oftentimes, if I don't have quite the right color the first time around, I'm not going to necessarily uh, try to get rid of it. Um, because oftentimes, layering over it will make, that, make a more compelling mix. And what color is that water? I'm trying to leave out uh, a little space for where the, the lights are going to go. I'm just going to move this. You can see I, I mean, I use pastel like a, if this was paint, this is, you know, I'm using my number, number 10 or 12 brush, right? And um, just getting, getting. It's really interesting to me. I just got back from, uh, uh, I was painting in Maui. Um, it's terrible. Like, to go from Maui to California, it's, it's a tough, tough gig. Um, but I, no, it's, it's interesting to me how different the ocean is here than the ocean in Maui. The color of the water is very different. And Yeah, I think part of it's, well, with Maui, um, I mean, this isn't so much the per atmospheric perspective issue of it, but um, I don't know. I'm doing a little guesswork here because I'm an artist and not a, like, not a scientist. Um, but the, it seems like it's a very different ocean life. You've got those, a lot of kelp yeah. in there, so you've got these darker 
the ocean seems a lot. Well, I mean, I've been, it's also been foggy. It's part of it. But even even on a um, on a rainy day in uh, in Maui, um, the color of the water is a little brighter in uh, in Maui, and you get more of the turquoises. Um, and I do remember really amazing turquoise at um, Point Lobos at Lake China Cove. Um, but in general, and I think that's where you've got you've got that, and in a lot of Maui you've got the re the shallower water and you've got the reefs, yeah. and so that changes the color. Um, someone who knows something on on YouTube right now is just doing a face palm and going, oh, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> um, sorry, what was your question? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that, and it's not even like it's so much a conscious, you know, I'm trying to unify the painting. It's just that um, in, a, in a landscape, everything is, um, light's just bouncing all over the place. So, um, you know, the light's going to be bouncing from the water. I mean, that, like, the, the water's reflecting the color in the sky. And then the color of the water is going to be bouncing into the cliffs. The light from, from this cliff is going to bounce into the shadows and make reflected light. So it's, it's like, you know, in terms of light, the, it's, the, it's like there's this conversation that's going on between all the different forms. And so I think if you're paying attention to that, you're naturally going to, to find those unifying colors. Um, I don't know, does that answer your, your question? Yeah. yeah. So... Um, so I don't feel like I have to be that, um, I'm trying to find the blue for the sky, speaking of, uh, the blue for the sky is going to be a little lighter than the, than the ocean. But yeah, so I, I mean, I guess I'm always thinking about relating colors. Um, no, that's not right. Um, so in other words, you know, when I get this, the, the average color here, when I'm, paint the sky color, I'm going to be thinking about how it relates. I'm not, I'm, just, I'm not just trying to match what I see out there, like say if I'm painting outside. I'm also looking at how does this relate to this. And that's especially important because um, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, if you're working in pastel, sometimes you don't have, just don't have the, the right color. You know, it doesn't matter how many, I mean, anybody who's done pastel, I don't care how many you bring out there, you just have the right color. Um, and so what Pastel has taught me, uh, the valuable lesson that I think Pastel has taught me is, is really trying to understand color relationships. So if, say, if I intensify a color in an area, I might uh, have, then I'll have to intensify a color in a corresponding area. So like if, if this goes a little bluer than maybe what I see, then I might have to do that with the sky as well. Um, so... And what's funny about that, and I think another good lesson with pastel for me is that, um, you know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm juicing up the colors a little bit. Maybe I'm doing it a little too much, but, you know, sometimes I'll just go with what feels right um, and intensifying the colors a little bit. And then, like, again, for any of you that work outside, it's so often the case where you feel like, wow, I'm really... I'm really getting some pizzazz on these colors. I'm really pushing them. And then you get back in the studio, and they're, if I've pushed them, usually they're just right once I get back inside. Um, sometimes if I'm, so here I'm just trying to layer up a little bit. Um, so the idea of a sky is that it's light shining through. Um, it's not. It's not a uniform color, so um, so it's going to be more interesting, more compelling to layer up some colors. It's one of the fun things coming from Montana to here. Um, you were asking about atmosphere. Um, Montana is like um, like I live at right about five thousand feet. 
and the mountains are you know, up to 12,000 feet around the area. And it's sometimes I, I, I almost have to in sim you know, intentionally simplify forms and invent a little bit of atmosphere because it's so dry. So it's so fun to come out to a place like Carmel and you know, you've got, um, it's like easy atmosphere. It's right there. It's not easy, but I mean, it's not easy to paint, but you know, I can see it. You know, you can, you can see like you've got one rock form and then the next rock form behind it. And then yeah. like today, um, today it was foggy and it was just great because it was like I had the thing that I was painting that I was really interested in and you know, two cliffs over and it's totally dissolved and it's blue and I'm just like, hey, thank you. Well done. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of um, one thing that you do get here. You get that moisture at the horizon even on a sunny day. So that blue doesn't come all the way down to the horizon. It stops a little bit. So you get a little bit of the kind of pinky orangey haze um, from the moisture in the air. But, uh, so there's another, yeah, so the, the, your general progression in a sky from horizon up is um, if, you're, if you're like in a place like Montana where it's dry, it starts with turquoise and then it moves up to a blue-violet overhead. Um, here, it's just you start with a kind of a hazy layer that's more of a orangey pinky color depending on you know depending on how how humid it is or if there's fog and then and then you start that progression and it'll be a little bit uh, generally a little bit more subtle it moves out west so so I love about painting different places because I feel like um, I feel like in terms of, uh, this is not a fully formed thought, but um, an artist's style is something that's just going to happen naturally. You know, it's just your personality. And the more you look and the more you paint, you're just going to, it's just going to naturally happen. Um, but I think style becomes a problem when, as an artist, you just approach everything the same way no matter what it is. You know, so that it's always unmistakably the way you paint. And I love painting on location, and I love painting different areas um, because, sorry, I'm looking here, um, because it doesn't let me just settle into one approach. Um, you know, if I'm painting on a humid day in California or a foggy day, it's just going to, my mood is going to change. It's going to make me react in a different way. And because I'm working on location, I'm going to try, maybe try things that I wouldn't, try techniques, try um, approaches, um, especially if it's unfamiliar, you know, um, to try to find the language that respond that, to find that language that um, speaks to that place in a way that to me is honest and has integrity. Um, I don't know, maybe that, sometimes I feel a little pressure, you know, from when you get that advice from galleries or from, I don't know, people that are trying to advise you on how to build your career, you know, that you should have a, a very recognizable subject and style. But I feel like it's much more exciting just to get out and respond to things as they are and Another way of putting it is every time I set up my easel outside, I should feel a little anxiety. Um, it should feel like a new thing. It should feel like, oh, how do, I, how do I have language for that? And as soon as I'm like, oh, I got this, then I think, well, something's wrong then. Um, we should always be a little bit scared by what we're doing. What's that? 
Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think it's, you know, you, you develop a, a, a vocabulary. Um, you know, it's like, um, I feel like planning outside, plein air painting, is a little bit, um, to, to use an analogy, if it's music, um, if, you, if you watch, you know, some good jazz musicians that are improving together, um, they're listening and they're responding um, to what the other musicians are doing. But they're able to do that because they've done all that time of doing scales and taking lessons and doing all that stuff that feels mundane and boring. Um, and so it feels like they're completely just working intuitively, but that intuition comes from you know, years and years of study. So, and I don't know exactly where that line is, you know, between um, intuition and uh, thoughtful approach. I don't know if that answers your question. Good question. <laughs> How's that? Ch well, I think that um, what's changed over the years is that um, I think because I've put in a lot of time, um, I, f I feel like I'm game to try a wider variety of subject matter on location and um, And you know, I, I feel a, a little better equipped to to maybe try uh, you know architecture or um, like in this Maui trip. I finally started to acknowledge that there are people on the beach <laughs> and try to put them in. Only they're like they're little because yeah. I'm, I'm not good enough to paint them when they're close <laughs> when they're just walking like that. But you know, just trying things like that, uh, trying to expand the, what I'm doing with subject matter. Um, you know there. Uh, even a scene like this, you know, the, a handful of years ago, I would have stood there and been like, <gasps> what am I going to do? Whereas now I'm like, wow, that's complicated. Let's get going. Um, and, and I think, what's that? Yeah, and I think part of it's that um, I, I don't, I know this sounds weird, but I don't beat myself up as much as I did when I was younger. Um, you know, like, I, I, sometimes, you know, especially in the middle of the painting process, uh, every painting goes through what I would call an awkward adolescence, where, you're, where suddenly, it, you know, the painting is sullen and it's moody and it's not talking it's back and it's, uh, and, and you're like, oh, you start feeling like, well, is this ever going to come, come through the other end? And it, I used to get a lot more anxious when that would happen. And now I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, this part of the painting process feels like it's kicking my butt, but I know I have a better sense of where I'm going. I guess you know I can, I can visualize. Um, I think I'm better able to visualize to myself where I want to go with the painting, um, so that when I'm going through those stages that are just going to happen, that are a little bit awkward, um, I don't. It, it doesn't uh, it doesn't phase me like it used to. Does that answer your question? I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I think the process that I'm on right now is is um, you know it, like where am I going with my work? Um, I think that's just trying to really find a way to distill things down to simpler. You know, tr trying to find the I, the the most economical way to say what I want to say. Um, and part of that's that I think that it's easy, you know, when you're, when you're developing your voice as an artist, um, there's a tendency to want to prove yourself, 
I mean, to yourself and to other people. Uh, at least for me, there was. Um, you know that I that I'm, you know, I'm worthy. I can do this. I can paint this. Um, and so with that, there's a, a. It's easy to fall into trying to get too crazy with um, detail and drama and, and all that. Um, and uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. And as I, I think as, as I slowly mature, um, <laughs> slow, long process, um, I'm, I'm getting better about just really trying to listen to my own voice as an artist and, and, uh, and really trying to get on that long journey of trying to figure out exactly what I want to say and trusting that if I'm honest with um, how I want to say it, that people will come along for the ride. Um, people, res people respond really well to, to, uh, to a good, honest approach to things, I think. And so I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm getting over trying to, trying to prove myself. That said, you know, being on, having people sit out here, I do want a painting to work. <laughs> get your money's worth. So I guess what I'd say right now, I'm, you know, this is like, I should have stopped. But uh, so we had our first pass where I'm just getting in the big forms. And then now I'm, I'm basically, I, I would say this is like act two. Um, you know, now I'm starting to go back in and refine. You know, I've basically got light shadow forms, basic colors here. And so now, if you know, like, if you're if you're doing well, this is where it starts to get fun, because not that it's not fun before, but um, you know, I've got my basic light shadow patterns, and so now I can start playing within those forms. So that means getting getting more sense of uh, light and movement in the water, um, and then working within forms, um, you know, like adding some variety in the shadows, adding some variety in the light areas. Sorry, camera. <laughs> All that time in Maui. That was fun. So I've been doing the, um, the Maui plein air um, for four years. Got invited to do that. And um, so that's usually in February. And I met this. Um, wonderful couple that live in Hana. And if any of you have been to, to, to Maui, have any of you driven the Hana Highway? Yes. And <laughs> did you lose your lunch? <laughs> <laughs> I saw so sorry. A little aside. We're stuck behind someone who's driving really slow because I've driven the Hana Highway a lot now. And, uh, and then they suddenly just lurch over and before the vehicles even stop, the sliding door opens up, and this woman comes tumbling out, and she's like, oh, no. <laughs> it's like, oh I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so, um, so I, I've, I fell in love with Hana. It's just such a great area there. Um, and I, I love the, the, it's a little slower pace. It's beautiful. I mean, it rains a fair amount, but. Um, but you've got all those the food trucks and and uh, and that kind of jungly um, stuff and um, so anyway I met some I'm uh, first year I was did the Maui Plain Air, I met this couple that they're uh, they're artists and um, they're they've been renting a place in Hana and. Um, and they do like just enough to survive so that they can paint, you know. Occasionally clean houses or take care, you know, they do a little caretaking and then mostly they paint. And so they said, hey, if you know, if you ever want to come, come stay at our place. So the second year I came, I, I uh, stayed with them. 
and it was great because then I had it, you know, they really know the area. So they basically were painting buddies and tour guides and um, showed me around. So every year when I do the Maui Plain Air, I'd go and stay with them first. And then I always felt kind of sad because I'd have to go over to Lahaina and to the, you know, the, the touristed side. Uh -huh. Got to go there now. Um, now there's some pretty stuff over there too. Um, but Hana just is, yeah, it just fits my personality, I guess. But anyway, so they, uh, they texted me this, this, uh, earlier this summer and said, hey, we gotta, we've got to leave for a while in August. Um, do you want to borrow our truck in our place? And um, so I was like, ah, I, gotta I wasn't really looking for a trip to Maui this summer. Um, so we scraped it together and got to take my kids. So that was fun because they'd never gotten to go. It's a funny thing. It's sometimes it's hard to explain to people. Like I do a lot of traveling, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're running off to Maui to go paint. Isn't that great? And I'm like, yeah, but I work. I get up before dawn, and I paint till after dark. And then I usually have a day or two at the end to go and, you know, jump in the ocean. So it was nice this time. It was more, um, it was as much, you know, as I'd say it's like one-third painting, two-thirds family playtime. Um, and uh, so I did get some good work done. But mostly, I would, you know, I just get up at sunrise while they're still sleeping and go paint. But I love it. Then you go and pick papayas or, I mean, uh, pick limes and, I mean, everything, avocados, they're just all, I'll tell you, if, if the apocalypse comes, that's where I want to be, if you can survive yeah. there. So what I'm going to do here, sorry, going back to, I'm talking more um, ideas than actual painting here. Um, so. What I want to do here, just thinking about the memory of being in the place and having, you know, the, the benefit of having painted there before, um, I feel like a lot of times photos come out a little bit cold. Um, so if you can see here um, on the photo here, um, you know, this, this color is grayer and, and colder, and I'm intentionally warming it up because, one, because it's just more pleasant that way. But two, I'm going to get two colors to function as one color. I don't have, you know, I have a color that's too dark and I have a color that's too whatever, you know, too blue or something, and I want them to work together. So then I might press a little bit harder so that they would naturally blend into each other. So it, it partly just depends on what you're trying to do. But in gen as a general rule, I'm, I'm um, fairly light touch. No, then I'm just I'm just chiseling it in. Like then I would I'd be having like a, um, I'm not pressing super hard, because I want to be able to, I don't want to fill in the paper too much, but um, but fairly. You know a little bit. Um, I think with uh, I think with this paper you could get away with using some harder pastels. Um, I generally use mostly just soft pastels, though. Um, okay. Get a little bit more of a transition there. And you can see I don't, I tend not to do much in the way of blending um, because I find that as I layer up, the, the pastel just naturally blends.
Okay, what do I need to do now? Have you ever feel like if you could just do all your paintings to about 80%, 90%, you'd get so much work done? It's like it's almost done, and then it takes me as long to finish. I don't know if that's going to be too strong. I'm laying over just a little bit of blue just to give this some variety. So when I think about color, I'm, um, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking about color within the form. Stand to the side, stand to the side, okay. Um, so I can play around with variations within this, you know, like I basically set myself s rules, like this color right in here, it's my base color. And then I'm just playing around with getting some uh, cooler colors over the top of it. Um, but they've got to work within that, um, that established base color. Here, if, it, if that's this is a case where, say, you lay a color on that's a little sticking, jumping out a little too much, you know, that's where you can blend a little bit. Careful if it's a sand and paper, if you do too much blending with your finger, you'll suddenly realize you have. I mean, it's good if you, if you, you don't want the FBI to be able to fingerprint you because <laughs> you leave part of your finger on the paper. Okay, so what do we got to do with the water here? So I think I can go a little step darker and a little step lighter on some parts of that water just to get. And if you want a general rule for color, in my mind, I'm always saying, can I get away with? You know, you pick up a color and say, can I get away with this? And, um, and then see, and typically, I think one of the, one of the, um, one of the, the mistakes that, you know, if you feel like you, you're doing paintings and you come in and they're, the color feels nondescript. Um, sometimes what happens is color exists in the context, right? So if I'm just starting off and I just lay down, say, that bright color there or the green there, it might look, um, initially, it might look outrageous and uh, because it, I haven't built up a context yet, so I haven't built up my colors around it. Um, and so the tendency is, is to want to just immediately knock it down, you know, knock that color down and, and, uh, and go back to what you had before. But my suggestion is, uh, unless it's obvious, you know, sometimes you put down a color and you're like, wow, that is obviously way off. I mean, I'm totally wrong on that color. But if it's like, ooh, that feels a little too strong, that feels a little too bright or a little too intense or whatever, um, let it sit there for a little while. You know, build up a context around it um, and see if maybe once you get your other colors in there, that initial color that seemed totally outrageous, um, 
will be just right. So resist that. Yeah, I guess the lesson is you know resist that tendency, the temptation to, to um, make your color safe, knock everything down to. I'm gonna do a little shameless plug here. Um, I uh, I did put together a, a set for Jack Richardson and Company. So um, if you're looking for, they're really reasonable, and they're pretty good pastels. They're they're similar, a little bit similar to like Unison. Um, and I put a fair amount of time and work into coming up with a set. Basically, I did a bunch of. Did probably like. 20 or 30 little little studies and then uh, kept putting the colors aside that I f realized that I was using a lot of. Um, so it's just a general landscape set. So I did I did a you know to put it together I did some you know Montana mountain scenes, I did some ocean scenes. Um, some sky things. So it's, you know, obviously no, no one set's going to get you everything you need, but um, it's, there's a set of 80 and then there's a supplemental set if you want to get a few more that's uh, another set of 20. Yeah, so, so that's, um, this, it's all kind of in disarray, but this set down here is, that I've been grabbing from is mostly, most of that's the set. I feel like I've been going forever, and I realize it's only been an hour, so <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm okay. sneeze. Um, you know, it give and take. I mean, it, it, sometimes it's a little bit quicker, but then, I don't know. I mean, for me, it, it really just depends on on the subject and um, and the one nice thing with pastel <coughs> is that like if you're working in a studio you can af essentially do what would be a, a you know glazing um, with pastel you don't have to wait for it to dry Sorry, what's that? So they both feed into each other and, and 
interesting ways. Um, I'll start with the other direction and then get back to, to what you're asking. Um, working in oil helped me to, to think more and more paint in a more painterly fashion, quite simply, you know, just thinking of those big planes. Um, because um, you know, you're starting with the big brushes. So thinking about um, thinking about <laughs> thinking about putting in big broad um, areas of, of uh, color right away with pastel, getting to the point. I think oil has really taught me that. Um, I think that um, what pastel is where it has helped my oils is um, with oil because you can mix. Sometimes it's easy to to get boring with color um, because you know to, to because you can mix it down. You can mix it down to that subtle gray. You can really get a lot closer to matching color with with oil to what's there. And so it's easy to just kind of keep mixing and, and then have things that aren't very interesting. And so pastel has given me that reminder that, you know, that you can really have your colors pop, that you can push color and the idea of color uh, relativity. So um, that as it, it's about finding color relationships first. Um, you know, it's, it's not so much that you're trying to get the right color, you're trying to get the right color relationships. And pastel, because of that, the problem solving nature of, you know, like what I'm doing here, going, okay, I don't quite have that light blue on the water, so I'm going to play around until I can find something that feels like that. Um, and I bring that, that sensibility into oil. Um, and that I think keeps my oils more fresh. That said, okay, I need to go a little darker. I got to deal with this guy too. That poor bush is sitting there in isolation. The other thing that's good about working in two mediums is that I can always have the illusion that I could have done it better if I had just worked in the other medium. <laughs> God, it would have been a really good painting if I had just thought of using the <laughs> oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that um, off and on. And every once in a while I've done it and um, done the same piece in two. In like I've done, every once in a while I've done two studio paintings, one in oil and one in pastel. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have done a, a study in, in oil and get back to the studio and think, you know, this one should be, this would make a really nice um, pastel or vice versa. Okay, I'm still avoiding that water. This is the stare at my colors part of the demo. Riveting. Oh, see, that's a little too light. So again, the conversation that's in my head, and this should be the same conversation that you have, um, whether it's oil or pastel. There we go. I just said, you know, when I put that initial color down, I said, oh, that's too light. So then I think, okay, I got to go a little darker. That's too bright. I need to go a little duller. You know, so um, in my own mind, I'm just always trying to articulate what, um, how the color is functioning, and how I need to adjust. 
I think the other thing at this point, too, is that um, just trying to make sure that I don't go too far with all the little patterns in the water. That's the danger of, of photography, especially if you have some waves happening. Um, because the camera can catch a wave in a way that the human eye can't. And so you might get all the detail in a, in a wave or, or movement of water, but it doesn't feel like it, it feels static. And to me, it's more interesting. Um, like what I'm after in when I'm painting water, whether it's a river or ocean or creek or whatever, um, I want the sense of the movement. And so I'm, uh, you know, I'm st step back a lot at this point because there's a, often there's a certain point where if I put too much information in, it suddenly feels really static. Also, you want to be just look for for uh, patterns within the bigger form. So that it's not, you know, so like say in, the, in something like this, it can just start looking streaky if, you, if you're not paying attention to um, trying to find a little variation here and there. That's going to be too dark. Put in it, see what it looks like with a few of those. There's some of these rocks that are sticking out from the cliff. I haven't really put any of them in. So the other thing with that idea of, you know, like say if you're working on water, not getting so detailed that it loses the sense of movement, in general, at this point in the process, um, I want to be really asking myself, if, is what I'm doing adding to the, basically a painting I want to tell, it's telling a good story. And so if you're sitting in a bar trying to tell a good story, you try to find the interesting parts of the story to tell, leave out superfluous details, and exaggerate if you need to. You know, to get the laugh or to get whatever. Um, and I think a painting is similar. You know, you, you're, um, I want to keep stepping back and asking myself if, if what I'm doing is adding to that story, making it a better story, or if it's just detail for detail's sake. So the other thing at the at towards the later part of the process too, where I'm really going to start looking as is these these intersections. I mean the, the the edges of you know say where the water plane meets the the rock plane. Make sure that those those are working because usually that's where there's you know the eyes going to be drawn to those places. So here I'm, you're asking about pressure. Here I'm pushing a lot harder because I'm trying to get that pastel to sit over that white. Sometimes if you need to, you can, you know, you, if it's not taking, you can brush it, take a brush and brush back and you can get towards the paper again. Okay.
think I'm going to get one. Yeah, because my studio light's just a little bit. I, I find sometimes when I go to photograph my work, you know, I, t I take it out to. I use a one of those photo tents to to photograph my work, and sometimes I'll take it out of the studio, and the color will have f will feel a lot more um, like it's more blended in the studio, and then I'll take it out, and colors will be popping more than I thought they were. <laughs> So I th I've been meaning to address that. What kind of vendor is this? Do you know? This one is uh, by, uh, it's a local manufacturer and vendor, uh, Doug, uh, I can't remember what you're referring to. I've got brochures for his site. Which one? Yeah, Doug Woodman, vendor. Um, I've got some brochures for his site. Yeah, he just emailed me before I came because I'm, I'm doing a Laguna Plain Air. And so he emailed the artist for that. And uh, I was like, oh, good timing. Uh, it's October something or other. Um, like mid-October, I think. So I'm excited. It's my first time doing that, this one. I came and um, did a big road trip in March, and uh, I did Borrego, uh, Borrego Springs Plain Air, and then came out to Laguna and stayed in Laguna because I wanted to get familiar with the area um, before the show, and I had a really good time. It's another place where. I feel like this area and then some of the beaches at Laguna, it's like they're just, it's almost, I mean, it's not that it's easy to paint, but it's almost too easy in terms of like, oh my goodness, did you just make this all for the artists? <laughs> like Garrett Potter, I remember the first time I painted there, I was like, wow, you just, if the light's not good this way, just, there you go. <laughs> Walk 10 feet this way. Um, I feel like you don't have to work very hard. So I want to be comparing here. I'm going to try to get a little, little bit of the, um, those distant cliffs. And so now I'm just looking at temperature. Um, and this is important when you're working on location. It's easy. Basically, it's, it's easy to start doing this. So if you can look at, if you can see the computer screen. So I'm painting this area. So I just start looking at this area. And then I come up, and then I'm painting, you know, so this is, imagine, oops, I don't want to do Facebook. Sorry. Um, you know, and then I get back here, and I start studying all of this back here. Well, it's easy. You can see in the. It's easy to see in the photograph how how close these values are because it's all foggy back there, you know, and it's got some distance, got some atmospheric perspective. So, between the darkest dark and the lightest light, you know, they, these shadows are really subtle. But if I'm standing out there and I just start looking out there and just keep painting out there, what I see out there, it's easy to to make those contrasts too strong, make the color too strong. So what I have to do is I have to be compar always comparing like forms. So if I'm painting the light on these cliffs back here, I want to be looking at the cliffs here. So you can see even now how there's a lot more information, a lot more contrast. Oftentimes there's going to be a temperature shift. You know, you're going to see more color in the stuff that's up close. So. So uh, you know, if you're standing outside, you know, be comparing these light forms. So you could compare these shadows to these shadows, and then you can start seeing. Especially if it's hard to see, like in shadows, so oftentimes it's hard to see the color in a shadow. I find it really hard. You know, like, wow, what am I seeing there? Um, 
sometimes if I bounce my eyes between, say, a near shadow and a far shadow, um, same things like, say, you've got cloud shadows, so you've got a nice recession of clouds, and you're like, what is that subtle, like, cloud shadow color? Well, look at the, look at the um, clouds near the horizon, look at the clouds overhead, and just bounce your eyes back and forth between the shadows at the horizon, shadows overhead. Same thing with the light at the horizon, light overhead. Anything that's like, and you, you'll start just to be able to differentiate those subtle changes. Um, so in this case, you know, I want to make sure that um, that any any information back here um, is going to be really understated and subtle. So compare that to that. The other thing to think about too is is that um, if you think about how we see versus how the camera sees, you know, I can take a picture where everything is in focus. Um, I'm going to bring that in here. Uh, whereas if I'm looking, if I'm standing there and looking at this scene, um, and I'm focusing on this area, then that's out of focus. So I want to try to paint that, at least, at least suggest that idea of an area of focus in an area that's just hinted at. So, all right, let's deal with this annoying bush. I'm going to look at the whole thing. And sometimes something like this, if it feels like it's too isolated, um, oops, that's not right. Can't use that though. Um, you know, that's again uh, your your artistic liberties of what you what you're going to put in, what you're going to edit out. Um, so it might be that. If at the end of this I decide that that bush is calling too much attention to itself, I can just I can rip it up. <laughs> but I'll leave it for now. Get some more color in that hill. Oh, and as my wonderful patient viewers, if you at this point, if you're seeing something that's driving you nuts that I'm missing, um, feel free to let me know. So that's why I teach workshops, because then I demo and people are like, are you going to put that in? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to put that in. I'm going to fix that. I count on my students to point out the things I'm missing. <laughs> Just get those in. Oh, I like that little bit of color. I think that's OK. See? See, whenever you can get away with that, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Get so excited. I think next time i got to pack a little better on my reds, though. And today I was really struggling with uh, trying to get the, the red on those ice plants. See, the other thing that's nice about you pop in a color like that, and if it works, then you're like, wait a second, maybe I can push the color. You know, I don't know. We'll see if I can. Probably can't get away with this, but you know, maybe I can push color over here a little bit. Worst case scenario, you just pull it back out. All right, so check that. See that? See that? Ah. It's the little things that get me excited. <laughs> Can I get away with? Always ask yourself that. 
another argument just for, for working on location too is, is that um, you know, the, the opportunity to try um, different compositions, different color, um, you know, try things out. And what's the worst case scenario? You bomb on a, on a painting, you know, you've invested two or three hours. It's not that big of a deal. So I'll tell you a little story about um, kind of taking risks, where like a very an important learning moment for me. It was um, I don't know a handful of years ago in Montana, and I was um, I was driving down the valley the, near my house, um, you know, an area that I paint a lot, and. Uh, and as I'm driving down the valley, it was early in the morning, and there's a pasture, and there's a sheep out in the pasture, and the llama with the sheep. And, um, and it was so beautiful, because the light, the, the morning light was just rimming the backs of the sheep, you know, it was backlit, you know. And, the, and, and I remember thinking, someone should paint that. <laughs> <laughs> like, as in someone else. Yeah. <laughs> because sheep move. <laughs> like, I can't paint sheep. And, uh, and as soon as I thought that, the next thought I, th I had was, well, you're never going to be able to paint sheep if you don't paint sheep, <laughs> right? So I pulled a Yui, and, uh, and I set up you know, on the other side of the fence. And I spent, oh god, I probably spent three hours painting repainting and wiping it down and repainting and repainting and repainting, wiping it again. And I finally got it to work. So got myself some sheep in the back like. So that's kind of, that was a good lesson for me because I, I realized like, oh, you know, there's this, it's easy to just go to those safe places, you know, paint those things that are like, oh, I can, I can do this, um, but what's the fun if you're out? I mean, I think it's good to, to go back to areas like, uh, you know, I will never apologize. There's a, some creeks near, near uh, my home that I have painted so many times in every season from every angle, and I will never apologize for painting it for the umpteenth time, because I think it's also important to just, to, to, to have those things that you're really familiar with and um, have a deep connection to. But at the same time, you know, like just um, over the past few years, like I've, I've had some opportunities to paint, um, taken a couple of trips to Morocco um, and painted in villages in the Atlas Mountains. Um, I got to paint in some villages that um, I don't think anybody has ever painted. That was really neat. Um, and, you know, and that was something so different because it was a landscape that they, you know, these villages are kind of built up into the mountainside and there's people herding sheep and goats and um, it was a much more human interaction in the landscape than I'm used to. Um, and again, I was like, I have no idea how I'm supposed to handle this. Um, I have a friend who, so, slightly complicated. I'll try to find the fast version. Um, so there's a gal from the same, my town. Um, her husband is a climber, North Face, you know, uh, professional climber. And they went to Morocco on their honeymoon. And they, on rumor of these, um, unclimbed great big walls in the Atlas Mountains. It took them forever to find it, find a way to get there. And she, um, she started, she was an architecture major and she speaks Arabic and Berber, <laughs> like everybody in Montana, I guess. <laughs> you know. 
it's just what we do. Um, winters are long. We just learn, you know, weird languages. Um, <laughs> no, so she, um, she, she saw these old buildings called Igrams. They're these uh, fortified granaries. They look like little castles. And she came back and raised money to um, help get some of them restored. And that grew into the Atlas Cultural Foundation. And she now, she and her husband have a, a home in one of these villages. And uh, they split their time between Chamonix and Morocco now. And uh, so a mutual friend of ours went to Morocco because she started, she, you know, she had given some money. So she went to see the projects, the, the, the work that they were doing there. And she came back and wanted me to, she had done some sketches and wanted me to look at them. And I saw the pictures on her computer. And I was like, where in the world is that? And she said, oh, we should go. I was like, I don't get to go to places like Morocco. I got three hungry boys. Um, and she kept bugging me about it. And so eventually we, uh, I, I just I, um, put together a trip. You know, got some other artists to sign on. And we went to Morocco. So I went twi two years. Um, and I'm trying to, I'm working on planning a trip um, 2021 to go back again. Um, that was, it was extraordinary. But again, one of those places I'm like, ha, ah, how do I paint this? Okay, I need a little shadow under that if I'm going to keep that. I'll try to finish up soon here. Sometimes it's a matter of just leaving it till the next day. Yeah. Or I've had so many pieces where um, I've even had pieces that have come back from shows, you know, didn't sell. And I did that with a, I had a piece that was in the OPA. I was like, great, got in the, must be a good painting, right? Um, <laughs> got into the, you know, it was in the OPA national show. And, uh, and I got it back, and I looked at it. And I went, "Oh, that sky is too bright. Like it's taking, you know, it's taking attention away from the mountain." And um, so I thought I was just gonna rework the color a little bit on the sky. And then that meant I reworked the color a little bit on the mountain where it intersects with the sky. And then six days later, I. It was done again. <laughs> I completely repainted the whole thing. What's that? Yeah. Um, I didn't bring one on this trip, so if anybody has one, I'll be happy to. Okay. Because I, you know, I obviously can't fly with fixatives. Um, I, I don't generally use it. Uh, it's very rare that I use it during the painting process. Because uh, um, usually if I need to get back to the paper, I'll just brush it off. Um, but you, uh, when I frame it, because if you see, like, um, I'll have almost chunks of pastel on the, on the paper. So I just do a light, a light fix at the end. Some artists are able to, to not use fixative, but and it must be just how you how you apply the pastel. I think I layer up enough that I need to. Yeah, I find that I use um, generally the one I found that works pretty well is Lascaux. Um, It, 
It doesn't seem to change the color. Right now, I'm just looking at, looking for things that are jumping. Um, I think it might be almost there. I don't really want the paper coming through there. The horizons are like the hardest. The, the let's see, I need a clean finger here. If I have, you know, like a larger piece of the horizon in a painting, I'll just I'll just take a ruler because um, I'll mess it up otherwise. So what I did there is I just took a little bit lighter green and brought it over there. I think it's subtle, but just to kick that back a little bit. Okay. Get these edges. Let's fix that. Just smear that. Get a little more texture in here. I just wanted to bring relate this down. So again, just thinking about relationships. Um, tricky thing with a foreground area like this is that I want to bring that forward without calling so much attention to it because it's not, you know, it's not really what the painting's about. But at the same time, it is important. All right, did anybody see anything that I'm missing? Okay, I'm going to sign it. What's that? <laughs> the otter. <laughs> Those are, they're so entertaining. They're so much fun. I remember when I came out for the, the convention um, with my, uh, I'm looking for my content now. My son, we just, we just, 
finish painting and then just climb down on the rocks and just, you know, just sit there forever watching the otters yeah. pop up. I was like, this is the best entertainment ever. So you want to sign it here? Let's see what that looks like. I'm amazed at how long they stay under when they dive. We started trying to time it. I can't remember how long it was, but we're like, oh, I can't hold my breath quite that long. Okay. There you have it.